Our Father, commented by St. Augustine in the Sermon on the Mount, Book 2, Chapter 9. The sixth petition is, and bring us not into temptation. Some manuscripts have the word lead, which is, I judge, equivalent in meaning, for both translations have arisen from the one, from the one Greek word which is used. But many parties in prayer express themselves thus, suffer us not to be led into temptation. That is to say, explaining in one sense the word lead is used. For God does not himself lead, but suffers that man to be led into temptation, whom he has deprived of his assistance, in accordance with the most hidden arrangement, and with his deserts. Often also, for manifest reasons, he judges him worthy of being so deprived and allowed to be led into temptation. But it is one thing to be led into temptation, another to be tempted. For without temptation no one can be proved, whether to himself as it is written, he that has not been tempted what manner of things does he know? Or to another, as the Apostle says, And your temptation in my flesh you despise it not. For from this circumstance he learnt that they were steadfast, because they were not turned aside from charity by those tribulations which had happened to the Apostle according to the flesh. For even before all temptations we are known to God, who knows all things before they happen. When therefore it is said, The Lord your God tempts, proves you, that he may know if you love him. The words that he may know are employed for what is the real state of the case, that he may make you know. Just as we speak of a joyful day, because it makes us joyful, of a sluggish frost because it makes us sluggish, and of innumerable things of the same sort which are found either in ordinary speech or in the discourse of learned men or in the holy scriptures. And the heretics who are opposed to the Old Testament, not understanding this, think that the brand of ignorance, as it were, is to be placed upon him of whom it is said, The Lord your God tempts you. As if in the Gospel it were not written of the Lord, and this he sent to tempt or, or prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. For if he knew the heart of him whom he was tempting, what is it that he wished to see by tempting him? But, in reality, that was done in order that he who was tempted might become known to himself, and that he might condemn his own despair on the multitude, on the multitudes being filled with the Lord's bread, while he had thought they had not enough to eat. Here, therefore, the prayer is not that we should not be tempted, but that we should not be brought into temptation, as if were it necessary that anyone should be examined by fire, he should pray, nor that he should not be touched by the fire, but that he should not be consumed. For the furnace proves the potter's vessels and the trial of tribulation righteous men. Joseph therefore was tempted with the allurement of debauchery, but he was not brought into temptation. Susanna was tempted, but she was not led or brought into temptation, and many others of both, of both sexes. But Job, most of all, in regard to those admirable steadfastness in the Lord his God, those heretical enemies of the Old Testament, when they wished to mock at it with sacrilegious mouth, brandished this above other weapons that Satan begged that he should be tempted. 
or they put the question to unskillful men by no means able to understand such things, how Satan could speak with God, not understanding, for they can't, inasmuch as they are blinded by superstition and controversy, that God does not occupy space by the mass of his corporeity, and thus exist in one place and not in another, or at least have one part here and another elsewhere. But that he is everywhere present in his majesty, not divided by parts, but everywhere complete. But if they take a fleshly view of what is said, the heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool, to which passage our Lord also bears testimony when he says, Swear not at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by the earth, for it is his footstool. What wonder if the devil, being placed on earth, stood before the feet of God and spoke something in his presence? For when will they be able to understand that there is no soul, however, however wicked, which can yet reason in any way, in whose conscience God does not speak?